welcome to this new video where I'm going to show uh, the setup uh, of the PCB for the master uh, fader. Uh, we have seen in the previous video the setup of the schematics that you are seeing into this moment and I'm going to show the counterpart uh, setup which is the PCB. Before to start, as usual, if you like the content of this channel and if you like this uh, video, I kindly ask you to subscribe, to give a thumbs up to the video and to click on the little bell in order to stay updated when there will be new content uploaded. This is very important for the growth of my channel, so if you want to support it, that's the, way, the best way to do it. So let's move to the PCB. And there you go. As usual, the format of the PCB and the size of the PCB is the one to fit the PSM Borns uh, motorized fader. This packaging is called PC terminal and it's the one where we have to produce and attach uh, a PCB to the, uh, to the motorized fader. All the components of these circuits are placed into the top part of the PCB, is the one in red. I cannot place any component in the bottom part, which you see in blue, because the bottom part is in fact in contact with the uh, motorized fader. I can use the bottom part uh, to route uh, lines uh, through wires in order to connect uh, the components, but I cannot populate it with any component. Uh, let's focus so on the top part. Uh, let me filter. There you go. This is uh, seen the, the, the view only on the top part. We see here the microcontroller. As we said last time, this is an STM32F0 microcontroller. Here and here you see its own uh, uh, decoupling capacitor, the one that are requested by the uh, data sheet. Here you, you see the coupling capacitor for the positive and negative of the analog part, so for the ADC, which is called VDDA and VSSA. Uh, and here you see, uh, again, the coupling capacitor for an additional power supply line, so uh, positive and negative, which I think is called VDD2 and VSS2, something like this. In the corner here you see the components for the touch channel, so you see here a one kilo ohm resistor, and uh, a capacitor, a very small capacitor for 22 picofarads. I've already explained in the other video why uh, uh, these uh, components are needed. Uh, this is the line of the uh, touch itself. And here you see uh, another capacitor for 0.1 microfarads, which is uh, uh, again needed for the so-called sampling channel required by the capacitive touch circuits of the STM32 platform. Then moving here, you have the uh, voltage supply uh, IC. It's the uh, it's a max 604. Uh, this is needed to bring the nine volt, which is the main power supply required by the DC motor of the motorized fader, and bring it to 3.3 volts, which is the power voltage supply for the uh, microcontroller. Here you have the BD6221. F, which is the, the single channel motor control. Here you have a momentary button uh, in order to reset the circuit when it's needed with its own pull down uh, resistor. You have here the headers that are needed, in this case, to program the microcontroller, uh, program and debug the microcontroller to supply the circuit. As I said, these are the 9 volt and the inputs and outputs for the UART, the TX and RX. Here you have a session with the six LEDs which I'm using uh, for debug purposes, as I've already explained. I have a green LED in order to signal that the, uh, that the microcontroller is up. I have a, a, a yellow LED which is blinking every second. This I need it in order to verify that the boot of the uh, microcontroller happened correctly. If there is any issue with the clock, you see the LED blinking slower or faster than one second. Here you have the RX and TX LEDs which are blinking when I receive data over the, UA, over the UART or I send the data over the UART. Here you have an orange LED which I call operation which is blinking uh, when the motorized fader is moving autonomously. And here you have a red LED which I'm uh, switching on and off when I touch and release the knob of the motorized fader in order to verify that uh, the uh, capacitive touch circuit is working correct. Finally, here you have the header needed to connect the DC motor uh, uh, to the uh, PCB. 
these two sets of headers are the one in fact attached to the motorized fader. You have three, three this is the positive line uh, for the two tapes uh, uh, linear potentiometer which is installed inside the, the motorized fader. Here two and two are the negative lines. One and one are actually the output uh, from the uh, linear potentiometer. And finally, you have here T, which is the line for the touch. That's it for all the setup and, and, and controls. If we, if we switch on the bottom layer, as I was saying, this is the bottom. Let's flip it in order to, uh, to look it in the right way. This is the bottom layer. Uh, as you can see, all the components are in gray because are on the other side. And on the bottom, as I was saying, there are only connections. Finally, I flip again, I toggle everything, the ground plane here, there you go, let's look it from the top, this is the uh, PCB with the ground plane uh, finished and ready to be uh, put in production. Let me show the PCB that I received recently from the market manufacturer. There you go. This is the PCB that I have received from market manufacturer that has produced it. Uh, the PCB is exactly uh, in the view that are, you are seeing uh, right now on the top side with all the components. Here we have the, the bottom part all the connections. Let's snap it into the motorizer fader. As you see, it's, it connects perfectly. Here, 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 and here is where I solder the PCB to the motorized fader. Next step, I will be populating the PCB and go ahead connecting the motorized fader to the circuit in order to test that everything is working fine.